Connecticut News 30, voted best newscast by the Associated Press. Now, live from WBIT Channel 30, this is Connecticut News at 11. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ann Baldwin, and this is Connecticut News 11 at 11. 11 uninterrupted minutes of news, weather, and sports. Just ahead, they're big, they're loud, and they love to go through the mud. We're going to give you a front row seat to the Monster Truck Show at the Civic Center. We're going to tell you why this baby penguin is making history tonight. And Lucy Arnaz talks candidly about life with her legendary comedian parents. We'll take you behind the scenes of tonight's NBC documentary, Lucy and Desi, a home video. But first, our top story tonight. President Clinton is preparing to give his first televised address as chief executive tomorrow night to try and sell his economic plan to the American people. Today, top administration officials went on talk shows to say that the president's program will ask for sacrifices from all Americans. This morning, White House Communications Director George Stephanopoulos appeared on NBC's Meet the Press to bolster support for Clinton's plan. There are going to be cuts in every single government agency, and there are going to be close to 150 specific spending reductions in the president's plan. He's serious about spending cuts in a way that no other president has been serious. We've heard a lot about it before, but nobody's done it. This president is committed to doing it. Meanwhile, Republican lawmakers have made it quite clear they will battle any presidential initiative to grow the economy through tax increases and new spending programs. Do that again. Look, the problem is we spend too much of the taxpayers' money too foolishly in too many ways in a, in a, that are self-indulgent to politicians' whims rather than the public's interest. Let's uh, let's have government clean up its act before they go hunting more money from hardworking American citizens. The Republicans feel that higher taxes could cost jobs. They say that deeper cuts in services is the way to control the federal budget. Clinton will address the nation from the Oval Office at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. He'll unveil specifics of his plan Wednesday night in a joint address to Congress. Well, here at home, angry Pratt and Whitney workers are getting ready to take their anger and their fight to Washington this week. Today, members of the Machinist Union staged a rally against thousands of Pratt layoffs that are devastating Connecticut workers. They took their fight today to the Avon home of company president Carl Krapik. We came here today to declare war, that we're going to fight the company inside the plant, outside the plant, whether it's lobbying or demonstrating. These workers will now take their fight to Washington, where they will meet with decision makers from Pratt's parent company, United Technologies. They will also meet with members of Connecticut's congressional delegation. Well, there is better news for another division of UTC tonight. 6,000 hourly Sikorsky aircraft workers in Connecticut and Florida have ratified a new three-year contract. Teamsters Local 1150 ratified the new contract, which will replace the existing one at midnight tonight. Details of the agreement, however, are not being released. Well, 48 photos showing the wreckage of the space shuttle Challenger have been released to a New York artist. The man sued for their release under the Freedom of Information Act. The pictures of the smashed crew cabin were taken in 1986 after the cabin was recovered from the Atlantic Ocean. The artist says that he hopes the pictures released will provide additional clues as to why the shuttle exploded in January of 1986, killing all seven astronauts. Non-NASA engineers are also eagerly awaiting the opportunity to study those photographs. New York City officials tonight have now identified the bodies of six people found shot execution style in a South Bronx living room today. Three of the victims have been identified as a woman, her 17-year-old son, and her 26-year-old daughter. Three neighbors from the same building were also killed. Police say that the victims were all shot at close range and were found lying face down. Police believe that drugs may have been the motive. The area is known for prostitution and drug-related crimes. Well, it was murder by stabbing in Hartford earlier this morning. Hartford police tonight now say that they are treating the discovery of a body found early this morning as a homicide. The lifeless body of a white male was found in a parked car on Norwich Street. Police say that they have identified the victim but are not giving out his name. There are still no suspects or leads in the case. The remains of a body found today in Guilford is now at the state medical examiner's office tonight where tests will be done to try and figure out how the victim died and who the victim is. A local resident called police after her dog came upon what appeared to be human remains. Police tonight say that the identity and the sex of the skeletal remains has yet to be determined. The state police major crime squad and Guilford police are investigating. 
NBC Tonight has uncovered new evidence that now suggests that Desiree Washington brought charges against Mike Tyson for the money. NBC law correspondent Star Jones obtained a copy of a document in which Desiree and her parents retained an attorney and agreed to pay him one-third of any damages that they recover. Some of the jurors who found Mike Tyson guilty at the original trial now think they may have made a mistake. She has lied to me. One simple fact, she stated she only wanted two things, for him to get help and for him not to be able to do it to somebody else. Nothing about monetary. Having heard additional information, are you having a hard time justifying what you did in that jury room? In hindsight, yes, no, yes. Lawyers for Mike Tyson will go before the Indiana Courts of Appeals tomorrow seeking a new trial for the boxer. Well, while some of those jurors admitted they may have made a mistake in convicting Tyson, another survey is out in another controversial case. According to a new poll in tomorrow's issue of the National Law Journal, most American jurors would have convicted the four Los Angeles police officers that were acquitted in the videotaped beating of Rodney King. In the poll of the nearly 800 jurors, 61% said that they would have convicted the officers in the King case. The chief deputy mayor of Paris apparently doesn't see anything romantic about munching on a Big Mac and gazing up at the Eiffel Tower. He says he will do anything he can to prevent McDonald's from opening a restaurant there. He has told a Paris newspaper that there are some sites in Paris that are sacred and that they must be protected from such encroachment. Well, there were a comedy couple and they were loved around the world. And tonight the world got a glimpse of the very private lives of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. It was a labor of love and a chance to see what Americans most celebrated couple were all about. Norman Mark goes behind the scenes tonight to take a look at Lucy Arnaz's family documentary, Lucy and Desi, a home video. While other hearts go wandering. A work of love and opportunity, a home movies of Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. For Lucy Arnaz, the daughter of Lucy and Desi, and her husband, actor Lawrence Luckinville, this was a chance to change the impression of an earlier CBS drama, which called Desi Arnaz a hard-drinking womanizer. Are you making this documentary in response to the public image of Lucy and Desi? He did drink too much, and, uh, and, and apparently did fool around on my mother, and that was terrible shame brought to her because of that. But they never tried to um, explain any of it to, to me. I, I thought, well, but don't tell me that and then not tell me why. I mean, I want, if, if Lincoln had been accused, I want to know why. They're famous people. You should go deeper. They couldn't make go of it because they were product of the times when you, it was very hard to admit failure and to go receive help for it. Not a lot of help was available. You know, even in those days, it wasn't cheap to go to the Betty Ford Center. Even if there had been one, it was you were admitting you were drunk. You know, you were admitting you were crazy if you went to a therapist. They had on the screen the image of the perfect family, and they never had it themselves, not from day one of their lives. I asked Lucy Arnaz if doing this program was a form of family therapy. It's exactly what it's been like, family therapy. I have to say, I've been through some therapy, and I've used it to try to ask the right questions. And another thing is, you'll go home to your own family and say, don't, well, I'm not gonna wait till my parents are gone or close to gone before I try to reconcile some of the feelings I have. Mm -hmm. Because that's the saddest thing that happens in life is you, we wait, we procrastinate, and suddenly somebody's gone and you can't fix it anymore even if you wanted to. to Lucille Ball did try to reconcile with Desi, but not right even her love letters were enough. We have nothing to worry about. Please believe that. All my love, forever and ever, your wife. I'm Norman Mark for NBC News. And now for a first look at tomorrow's forecast on 11 at 11, let's check in with Steve Teeling in the Weather Center. Steve? All right, thank you very much, Ann. You just saw some home videos of Desi and Lucy. How about some home videos of you, Ann? I did a little bit of investigating today. This was you and your family out there on Valentine's Day having a lot of fun sledding on down the hill. That's the correct way to do it. Now watch this. Danny, her son, will be at the wheels. Look out. Look out for the tree. Oh, you got it. I bet you can't wait, Ann, until you, he gets his license. I bet you're looking.